So I've already done an episode on how to increase space in your home for plants, but one of the exciting DIY projects that I had done is hanging this rod and largely to get some good light for some high light hanging basket plants. And that's what we're gonna cover today is hanging basket plants for highlight areas. And I'm simply going to go through some of the plants that I'm growing just near my Southwest window. So the first one that I wanna highlight is this one at the end. And this is called, commonly known as string of raindrops or string of tears. And this used to be known as Senecio citriformis, but it's now called Curio citriformis. And this is like in, in the genus of like the string of something or others. <laughs> so there's lots of these plants that have these really succulent leaves that are on these delicate green strings. And they just make such great hanging basket plants. But if you're growing this in a low light area, then it's going to struggle a little bit. The next one over to it is kind of this mysterious plant because I really think that this should be put into curio. But when I looked up in the taxonomic literature, it seems to be a Dendrophorbium peregrinum. It's also known as string of dolphins. And I heard that string of dolphins is also a hybrid plant. So there's a lot of things I'm uncertain about. However, all I know that I am certain of is that it makes a very beautiful hanging basket plant and you could see that it, it is a succulent plant, so it needs a little bit more of a higher light area. Now, what I've noticed with this plant is as it starts to age, I will show you here, some of those dolphins start to look a little bit more like manta rays. So you see how these have started to open up? This used to be a string of dolphins, but it kind of is a little bit more cup shaped. So you could see these little dolphins right here. Those still look like little dolphins, but they look like this now. So I'm gonna be curious as to whether that plant that's hanging in my hanging basket is going to remain looking like a dolphin. So the next ones are a little bit higher up. So I'm just gonna bring my chair and show you those. Try not to step on any of my plants. All right. So, okay, now I'm like really into my plants. <laughs> so this one right here is Ecclesia navicularis. This one's just starting to grow out. So this will get a little leggy if it's starting to reach for the sun. You can start to see that it grows a little bit more of a compact shape and starts to increase the internodes here. But um, this will also make a very beautiful hanging basket plant. This is my Lepismium cruciformis. And this actually is doesn't just grow well in a, a more higher lit area. Um, you'll notice I have this kind of in between my windows because this is a jungle cactus that will actually grow fine in a more medium light area as well. And I actually have this growing on the other side of my house, um, not near my southwest facing window, but you'll see that I'm growing kind of more of my succulent plants right next to the window and some of the least succulent plants growing kind of in between the window. The next one is similar to the Calicia navicularis. This is called Cyanotus somaliensis. And you'll notice that this has kind of fuzzy leaf. And this is typical for plants that are kind of growing in a little bit more higher light areas. They'll often have a little bit of this white fuzz in order to be able to bounce the light off of. So this one, as you could see, is is makes for a very nice hanging basket plant. The next one that I have off of that is a Ripsalis. And I would say that the Ripsalis, you know, it's another jungle cactus, so it doesn't necessarily want to always be in a highlight area. However, um, some of them are a little bit more thicker than typical. So if I come back down here, I'll show you my Ripsalis pentapatera. And I'm not using this in a hanging basket, but this plant would do extremely well in a more higher light area because you could see the thickness of the stems here um, means that this plant is probably amenable to uh, drier conditions and even sometimes higher light conditions. This is my Kleinia petraea. It's very redolent right now of like dirty socks and um, dandelions because it's, it's in bloom and it doesn't have the, uh, the nicest bloom. But it's a nice succulent plant and it's a beautiful hanging basket plant. I actually have another one that's not in a hanging basket, but it just gets these beautiful pendant shapes. Okay, the next one after that 
is curio radicans, and this is often sold as Senecio radicans, is known as string of bananas or string of fish hooks. And this one, I have uh, another one that's actually quite large that I've been growing. It's a little bit of a thinner variety, and this makes also an excellent hanging basket plant. And after that, I have a thono capensis, and I think it's Crassothena capensis now. So this one, and if you wanna look a little bit closer, I have this one too, which is not hanging in a hanging basket, but you can see it gets all these like pendant shapes. I think these are called string of pickles, but I'm not quite certain what the common name is. It actually was just in bloom. So last month, you know, I'm shooting this in, in January, but uh, last month, December, it had these little yellow flowers on, which were cute. This one's typically not a hanging basket plant, but I'm gonna throw it in there anyway. This is Portulacaria afra variegata. And I got this one because it had a little bit more of a hanging shape. So you could get this, it's otherwise known as elephant bush. It actually can kind of expand out pretty readily. This one I would, I would recommend as not necessarily a hanging basket plant, but if it has a shape like this, then it's not so bad. Okay. So this is my Neerigilia passiflora, and I actually saw this in Thailand. And you can see the mother plant is starting to die back a little bit, but it has this little baby offset right here. I might actually have to repot this because this is like a little root right here that I could actually plant that up. And this one actually does become a hanging basket plant, which is pretty cool. Then I would just actually point out these cacti. Um, you could get the, this cactus as Selenocereus, Disocactus epiphyllums. A lot of those will grow very well in highlight areas or higher light areas. I have this one a little bit higher up because this one is typical to a, a, a bit more of a jungle cactus. So I don't have it directly in my window. It's hanging just a little bit up above my window so that these more succulent plants are getting a bit more of that light. So this is the last plant that I'll show you in this room. And this is my Curio Riolanus or my Senecio Riolanus. And this is string of beads string of pearls, string of peas, it has all sorts of names. And uh, you could see that it's kind of grown out and I've started to grow it here. This could dry out very easily, so you wanna make sure that it's not directly in your southwest facing window, that um, it's a little bit pulled back because I do find that some of the, the pearls actually dry out. Now I lied because I was gonna say that was my last one for this, this room, but I'm just like looking at my cyanantrums right now. They don't have the most incredible foliage because they really are just kind of stems. These are plants that are native to Madagascar, but as you could see, they make really incredible hanging basket plants. Um, just a little bit more of a, an unusual look, if you will. So I know there's not a lot of light or probably not a lot of light that you could see coming in now, but it's a little bit more at the end of the day in the winter. However, these are Southwestern windows. so. A lot of intense light comes in and it reaches pretty far into the space. So you have to be a little bit more mindful with plants that could actually handle that kind of intensity of the light. And that is why I'm showing you some of these uh, plants that are a little bit more succulent in nature because those are the ones that could handle that amount of intensity of light that typically comes in through these windows. So this is my workroom and I extended the beam in this room in order to be able to have hanging basket plants as well in highlight areas because again, this is an extension of the other room and these are two southwest facing windows as well. So if I could just stand up on here. This one right here is a Kleinia stapeliformis. And this one I had actually growing on my windowsill but I thought it would make a very good hanging basket plant because as you can see, it starts to drape down. This one's an interesting one because I have this growing both in my northeast window as well as, you know, probably about three feet away now from my southwest facing window in the hanging basket. This is Senecio macroglossus. It looks like an ivy, but it's not related to the heterohelix. This is a Senecio. Um, and it has a very kind of thick leaf with a little bit more of a shine to it. So I think that this could actually also work as a hanging basket plant in a highlight area. Now this is Crassula, and I think this is Crassula perforata, if I'm not mistaken. And this Crassula I also had growing in a hanging basket a little bit closer to my southwest window, but this one doesn't look like it's going to be pendant shaped, but when it starts to get a little bit older, it'll start to get a little bit longer 
and I think you could see how cute it actually is. Now this is my Serapegia linearis subspecies woodii, and just like my Senecio macroglossus, this I have growing in my northeast facing window and I'm also growing it near my southwest facing window. It's one of those plants that I think grows across a range of conditions and this is um, definitely one of those that I would recommend in both areas. This one is Apentia cordifolium and this is a new one that I'm actually trying out. It does seem to be a good highlight plant but I noticed that mine is already starting to get a little dry and I don't know if that's because it's getting too high of light or maybe ineffective watering here and there. So I'm still trialing this out, but I would recommend this as more of a highlight plant rather than something that's growing in uh, lower to medium light. This beast of a plant is my Cissus quadrangularis. And I have a number of these actually growing on my southwest facing windowsill. This one happens to be a little bit larger. I picked this one up from my farmer's market and noticed that it had spider mites pretty soon afterwards. So I had treated it and I think I got it under control, but you could see that some of the stuff has dried out a little bit, but this is a plant that could manage being in a highlight area. And this one is my Ripsalis awaldiana. And this is another type of Ripsalis that is a jungle cactus. It's a little bit thicker than some of the other Ripsalises. So this is one that could manage being in a little bit more of a higher light area. And then if I could just reach over here, and maybe you'll see me, this is a uh, uh, cotyledon pendens. So this is a plant that gets really succulent leaves, very similar to, um, I would say, oh, the curio citriformis, but this one has a, a little bit of lighter color, a little bit more pastel sheens, and it'll start to get a little bit more appendant shapes, hence the species pendens. And if I could just kind of point out over here, if you can move my ficus lyrata, I have my sedum burrito right here that is growing up. Um, incredible hanging basket plant. And if you tend to like knock it down or shear off one of the, the leaves at a stem, it'll just start to, to grow uh, a, new, a new root. And then this plant right here is my really long Senecio or Curio radicans, and you could see that this is the same thing, string of fish hooks, string of bananas, but it's the, the smaller leaf form, and there's lots of different forms. You have really thick ones, really tiny ones, really thin ones, and that one has been growing for me for, oh, I don't know now, like six years? So that one has been with me for a while, but I would say that all of these have been really good highlight plants. There's some that have shocked me, so I wouldn't necessarily always recommend growing an Aeschcananthus radicans in highlight, but I've noticed that this one has fared extremely well. And, um, and I would say, you know, growing in a little bit more moderate light would actually be good for this plant. But, um, but for whatever reason, I think this, this higher light area has served it well as well. So I hope that gives you some ideas for good hanging basket plants that work well in higher light areas. Tell the viewers what highlight hanging basket plants work well for you in your home in the comments below. And if you want to deepen your knowledge of plant care, then check out some of my other resources, including my book, How to Make a Plant Love You, Cultivate Green Space in Your Home and Heart. The 125 Houseplant Care Spreadsheet and Houseplant Care Tracker, and the Houseplant Masterclass, which is the first audiovisual course on houseplant care, cultivation, and more at houseplantmasterclass.com.